Hi, my name is Ben Welch, and we're visiting today with Corey Oberlander. Corey is an independent soil fertility specialist. And uh, Corey, you were visiting with me in the hallway, and I was absolutely fascinated with some of the things you were telling me. Um, before we start, uh, just give us a little bit of your background. I know it's North Dakota State University, <laughs> but uh, give us a little of your background and, sure. and uh, set the table for us. All right, what I am, Ben, is I, I own a company called AgVaris in West Fargo, North Dakota, and I'm an independent soil fertility specialist, like you said, and what I do is I manage about 90,000 acres uh, in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Wisconsin, and I'm not a full crop consultant. I don't deal with fungicides, herbicides, and stuff. I deal with soils only. That's my background. We go in and take soil tests, send them off to Midwest Labs, and we come back and through some algorithms and some other things that have been developed throughout the years, um, we come together with a comprehensive fertility plan, um, starting from the seed furrow and working all the way back through different products and stuff. So. Okay. Um, you've been um, working with lots of different products for lots of different years. Yep. Um, oh, where do we start? Um, <laughs> some of the things you were telling me earlier. Um, uh, you're starting with the seed, right? Yep. Uh, just uh, uh, take us from there. And okay. what, what would what would a grower want to know? What, and what should I know? There's a lot that we probably don't know. What should we know? Well, a few things there. What I look at is a lot, I do a lot of independent uh, guest speaking throughout the years, and seed companies bring me in because uh, what's really happening is there's um, seed companies are becoming very frustrated because growers are starting to blame some of their germination and some of the other issues they're having on their seed. Uh, they're actually blaming the seed and they're realizing it's not the seed that's causing the issue. As corn production increases, growers are pushing the envelope and they're starting to use a lot of inferior, inferior, excuse me, um, products on their seed furrow. So what I like to tell guys is when you go out and you're buying a $300 bag of seed corn, you're planting at 34000 that needs to be a premium product, okay? Whether, I don't care what kind of seed you need to buy, it needs to be premium. Also, to go on top of it, you need a premium liquid fertilizer. And what's funny is since this industry is not regulated by the government, there is stuff that's all over the board. And when I work with growers, I tell them, your guys' job is to manage variables. As a farmer, you're managing variables. The more you can manage, the more successful you'll be. So if you can eliminate them, you're gonna be really successful. Well, when it comes to liquid fertilizers, there's a lot of variables involved, which is the ortho versus poly debate. Um, we've also talked salt loads, heavy metals, um, the raw materials, so on and so forth. And I've noticed through the years of doing this for over 10 years now that it seems like the Conklin products have kind of risen to the top. And I've never had any issues with it. And some of the other really good companies, every once in a while you start to have issues. And then 1034-0, there's always issues. So I try to tell guys, if you are going to use a 1034-0 product, green acid, use it on the side, never put it in the seed for row. And I highly recommend people to use a Conklin product because it is probably far superior than anything else out there. So, um, You were talking some about some of the heavy metals you, yep. you found. And, yep. Uh, share share that a little bit of that with us. Sure. Us. What it is is um, because it's not regulated, regulated by the government, all the green acids, um, some of the byproducts are heavy metals. A lot of them don't have mercury in it. If mercury is in it, then the government gets involved. A little bit of lead, but cadmium is one. I've got over 27, 28 research abstracts that show um, that when cadmium levels are elevated in liquid fertilizers, that will it'll actually set back or inhibit germination on corn. It won't necessarily kill the corn, but it'll probably push it back one, two, three, four days. And it'll eventually come up, and as we know in corn production, we want all our corn to come up at once. Mm -hmm. So yes, they will come up, but let's say they're three or four days behind, technically now they're a weed. And so now instead of 34,000 good plants, maybe you're at 25,000. And as we know, every thousand plants is about five bushels of corn. So these are some of the things guys don't look at. They'll look out when the corn's you know all this tall, and they'll take their stand count, and they'll say, I got 32,000, I did well. Okay, are they all 32,000 the same height? That's the big difference in yield. That's why these NCGA winners, it's funny how there's probably 100 different products on the market, but these NCGA winners all kind of gravitate towards one product. And if you ever look at that, it's kind of neat how they all kind of use Conklin. And that's because they're trying to eliminate those variables in the seed furrow. Yeah, I was just looking at the list of winners, both uh, national and, and state, and I think there's over 90-some state, besides all the national yep. winners, there's 90-some yep. state winners, all Conklin. And like you say, yep. they are kind of... Uh, just uh, coalescing on, on the Conklin uh, yep. product. 
Uh, how about germination? Uh, share with us a little bit on Amplify. You were talking. Yeah, well, it's, it's funny how, you know, living up in North Dakota, um, our season is really compressed and our soils are obviously really cold. And um, when it comes to working with Amplify, I've been working with it for probably since 07. That'll be about my eighth growing season. And I've seen it work unbelievably well to where one year would probably pay for the next 20 to where maybe a year or two it's break even or, or just a little bit more. But it's that one year that you use it that it's a big deal. But nine out of 10 times it pays for itself. And I tell growers that if something works seven out of 10 times, use it. If it works five out of 10 times, don't use it. And Amplify probably works nine out of 10 times. And what I've really seen is I like to tell guys what Amplify does is it gets the seed corn from the crook to out of the ground and up. And there's always a big challenge right here at this from crusting, cold soils, uh, wet inhibition. You have many different issues. It just gives it enough energy to get it up and going. And once you're there, then your liquid fertilizer will take over. And so I've seen in really good years where the soil's really warm and everything is perfect, you might increase your population to 300, which is about a wash. An average year, it's probably pushing 1,200, almost to 1,500 up there in those cold soils. And I've seen years where it's been over three and 4,000 plants. Now we're talking 20 bushels. Mm -hmm. At four, five, six bushels, you know, we're talking, you know, $100 an acre yeah. for a $3 seed treatment. Okay. So, um, anything else that, uh, um, you, you were mentioning something about uh, people using, uh, you've had growers use quite a, quite a few gallons of uh, oh, 34 oil. Yep, yep. Uh, elaborate on that. Yeah, so what we do is, um, the one downfall really of 1034 is two things. We're finding out more and more that early season potassium is needed in greater quantities than originally had thought, and also sulfur. And we know a deficiency sulfur is probably the biggest one we have right now in all our tissue tests. Well, 1034 you don't have any of that. So even the growers that are stuck on buying 1034 I tell them dollar for dollar, you're way better off backing down a gallon or two of 1034 and incorporating some potassium thiosulfate, which is Sidekick in the Conklin lineup. And we've seen huge yield results, um, you know, 15, 20 bushels. I had a grower last year, 13 and a half, just by putting a gallon of that in with their 1034 o treatment. And um, you're lowering the salt loads by lowering your 1034 o but you're also getting that potassium and sulfur. And I had a few growers now that have gone out and gone to the competition that carries potassium thiosulfate and they've actually retracted on the amount they can use in the seed furrow because if they are not comfortable pushing it to the limits Conklin can and they even had one company saying they don't know where Conklin gets their raw materials from but it's obviously far superior than what ours is. And so they're only recommending a quart where really if you're doing a quart it's not doing you any good. You should be two quarts, three, four quarts. And Conklin's really the only company that will allow you to do that. Okay. Any, any other things that you can think of we might um, I guess not off the top of my head, but it's uh, what I, being independent, I work with all the liquid fertilizer companies. And as I said, it's funny that I've been doing this for so long. The more I'm in it, the more I see the cream rise of the crop. And it's just funny how Conklin's always there. And I test literally over 200 probably liquid fertilizers every year. And I have yet to see one Conklin liquid fertilizer that does not meet spec or is higher salt loads than what has been advertised or even with all the other companies it's all over the place year to year interesting so yeah all right Corey. we really i know this is a time of year where you got more than yeah. <laughs> lots of things to do so we do appreciate it absolutely thank, thank you. you so much yep thank you all right